Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Blair Halbert. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Transactional Real Estate Podcast. Maybe you're watching on YouTube or somewhere else. Thank you for joining us. In this episode, my business partner Jeff and I are going to field some questions from some of our private mentoring clients uh, about deal structuring and how to do deals and how to get the business running and that sort of thing. So I think you're going to get a lot out of that. And so you definitely want to stay tuned. And if you want to learn more about how to become a transactional real estate engineer, in other words, uh, bringing uh, creating win-win deals out of thin air uh, with motivated sellers, whether they got enough equity for a cash deal or not. We're looking at cash terms, everything in between, and literally have doubled our conversion rate just by taking the blinders off from wholesale and rehab over into lease options, wrap mortgages, seller financing, everything else. And so I think you're going to get a lot out of that. And if you want to learn more, please check out our free webinar at BlairHalver.com. That's B-L-A-I-R-H-A-L-V as in Victor, E-R.com. We'll put a link somewhere in the show notes. Uh, but check out the free webinar, which is called How to Consistently Do Five or More Deals a Month Without Wholesaling, Without Rehabbing, Without Chasing Deals, and Without Working 80 Hours a Week. Sounds pretty good, right? All right. Well, check that out later. Right now, enjoy this episode. We'll see you on the flip. Good afternoon, everyone. It is approximately 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern. It's the 2nd of May. Welcome to our national Q&A call. So let's see who we have here. Uh, Luana, looks like you have your hand up. Let me unmute you. Hello? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. All right. How are you today? I'm great. I just got off the phone with the seller and I really didn't have a solution for her. I just told her I was going to call her back because she's in in pre foreclosure. Okay. I never dealt with that ever in my life. So, um All right. give us the details. Tell us uh, what you got going on there, what uh, what they've told you what they're looking for, and we'll see if we can't put something together here to help you. Okay, so um, the the asking price is three twenty. Okay, uh -huh. it's in great shape. Um, the mortgage is the mortgage balance is three forty k. Okay. The monthly payments is um, nineteen hundred, and her back payments are thirty thousand. So uh, yeah, the lowest price is three twenty k again, and the ARV is about. 859 k and i was like i was thinking in my head like i'm not going to be able to do this because of the down payment like it's not going to be enough five percent is about sixteen thousand. well but you've got did you say the arv or the, what you think the value is 800 and something thousand after oh no, it was 359 k 359 okay i'm sorry i wrote 859 i wish uh, yeah, that looks like that's going to be a kind of a non-deal if she's behind 30000 because the way that that pre-foreclosure thing works is you would have to catch that payment up. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing you may want to do is, you know, what is what is her plan? Uh, what's the seller's plan if, if you don't do a deal with them? Um, I didn't ask her that. I probably should have asked her, but I didn't know really what to do or say to her because... I never had a situation like this, but mm -hmm. yeah, so, but I was kind of confused because on Zillow, it said 282K pre foreclosure estimate, which I don't know what that means. I guess they sell it for that amount at the steps. Uh, is that the auction price, what they've established as their, their sale price? Can you tell mm -hmm. from Zillow? Well, yeah, on Zillow, yeah. Okay. Uh, that means that that may be the lender's opening bid. Uh, and, and for everybody's benefit, the way that a pre-foreclosure, as it's called, works is, uh, and this is, is very state by state, so I'd always check your own state local regs, but primarily the way it works is a lender will declare a property in default and they'll send a, what's called a notice of default. Um, some states have slightly different verbiage, but generally it's called a notice of default. And what that that document is, and typically that document has to be personally served on the borrower. Uh, that document would state how far behind they are, how much money they need to catch up, and the date at which the next action would happen. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, the next action would be the setting of an auction date. 
Now you have some states, uh, Texas and Georgia among them, that have what's called a rocket docket. And from start to stop, these things are like 30 to 45 days. They're very, very quick. Others like California have a 126 day window. So during that first phase of the foreclosure process, the default stage, there's usually an opportunity to catch up for their payment. And usually it's the amount that they're in default. Sometimes lenders will negotiate that and allow either less amount to be paid or paid over a period of time or uh, you know the entire amount over a period of time. Sometimes they'll work it out so that it can be added on the back of the loan. There's lots of ways to, to get involved with that. And one of the things you can do is talk to the lender mm -hmm. and see what they want. They're, the lender's interest at this stage of the game, this pre-foreclosure uh, you know, or notice of default stage, is typically just to get their payments caught up. That's the main thing. They really don't want the house back. It's not like you know they're trying to make any. They can't make any excess profit on anyway. Mm -hmm. The second stage is when you you complete the first stage is they file what's called a notice of trustee sale or an NTS, and that's what we typically refer to as the auction. Oh, okay. And they'll they have to set a price that's uh, public notice information, and the price would include the date of the auction, the location of the auction, typically these are auctioned on the county courthouse and these are not county by county, but the rules are state. And it will have, um, uh, you know, the time of the auction. And so you've all seen, you know, folks that say, oh, I bought a house at an auction. That's typically what they're talking about. They're buying it on the courthouse steps. Mm -hmm. Typically the, the trustee sale window is pretty quick. Um, usually less than 30 days. So when it gets, the closer it gets to that auction period, the more puckered the seller is going to be because um, depending on the state, depending on how all this works, it can, uh, you know, they can certainly lose their house. And so, you know, depending on how much time is left, and if you see a published notice on Zillow that has an auction date and a, an auction amount, you know that that thing is set. So what that's telling you is that lender is willing to take 280 some thousand, mm -hmm. even though they're owed 380 some thousand or 340 some thousand. So um, that gives you a sense of what the lender feels that the house might be worth. The lender typically will put either what they're owed or they're gonna put um, you know, something less than that. They can't put more. You know, mm -hmm. they're not entitled to get more than what they've got. So if you saw, you know, the way you described it uh, is that's probably an auction date or a notice of trustee sale. And so that's going to be the date at which the thing sells off. And that's going to be the price at which the lender will sell it off for. That's the minimum bid. Now, what happens in an auction? Obviously, it's an auction. And so they'll start at 283, let's say. And others will bid it up depending on the value that they perceive the mm -hmm. house to have for them. Yeah, they so, said the auction, foreclosure auction, is, it says um, June the 16th, 2019. Okay, so that's already been set. That's a notice of trustee sale. You're getting what's called short on the time. Um, and the, the borrower itself is probably going to lose that house because it sounds like there's really not enough there. By the time you pay 30,000 plus the, you assume the existing loan of 320, you're gonna be you know, at the 350 range and that's what it's worth. So you correctly mm -hmm. surmise that that doesn't make, that's not a good deal for you. Okay. Gotcha. you know, now there, there are other plays out there, you know, um, and I've done this several times. You can go back to the, to the owner and say, listen, you're gonna lose this house no matter mm -hmm. what. Uh, if you're in a deficiency state, they can come after you, lender can come after you for the, the difference between what they sell it for and what they get at an auction. And so, Mr. or Miss Seller, would you consider um, putting some money towards that 30000 yourself? In mm -hmm. other words, oh, okay. giving you the house plus giving you a check. Okay. Uh, people think that's impossible, but I've done it a dozen or more times in my career. Know. So it's, it's worth asking, you know, a lot of times people want to save their credit and they're, you know, I can't, I don't have 30, but I'm willing to put 10 towards it or something okay. like that. But it sounds like you've got a deal that's, that's probably not going to make sense. At this yeah. Point. Yeah. I was thinking that too, but I just wanted yeah. to run by you, you know? Yeah. Know. Yep. Absolutely. Um, that, that's a good one. Any, do you have any others, anything else that uh, we can help you with? 
No, not really. I mean, one of them, like, I'm supposed to have a potential one, but the son and the father are arguing, and it's, uh, I don't know what to do. The right. Father doesn't want to sign any documents. I don't know. I don't know why he has the power of attorney. Oh, that's that one you were saying where the father's in the hospital or whatever it was. And yeah, I don't, and I can't get in touch with the son anymore. It's weird. Oh. Have you talked to the father himself? Yeah, he said he has to talk to his son, yeah, and every time he calls, he never answers. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be tough. Uh, you know, the best thing to do is is just to keep working it and, and keep talking to the father if he's the one who has this power of attorney and uh, see if you can do something there. Have you looked at the title to see who actually owns it? No, I thought we were not supposed to do that. Or should I just go ahead and I can go ahead and look. I mean, I know I know how to do it. Yeah, if you know how to abstract, what's called abstract title, or you can check with somebody in the customer service department of your local title company and ask them to, um, you know, to find out who's on title is what you're looking for. You want to find out who really owns it, and okay. you know that would be the person that could to could do the deal. So maybe the son has the legal uh, capacity to do it and maybe he doesn't but um, you know there, you just never know on deals like this so it probably would be worth the extra uh, okay. extra effort oh yeah I had this one weird situation where this person I was thinking like it was a house but it was a manufacturer house and mm -hmm. she told me that um, the lot you have to pay for the lot she doesn't even own the lot Right. That's not unusual on manufactured <laughs> homes, you know, and typically mobile homes are like that, where, you know, they have to pay lot rent, that type of thing. They still can be good deals, you know, depending on the market. I mean, some markets, uh, a manufactured home, a mobile home is worth a lot of money. So oh. you know, it all depends on the numbers of the deal. Oh, well, I can't really tell how much it would be. Oh, she said it's 120, but... Uh, I can't really tell since she doesn't own the lot because I don't think it's worth that much, even though she remodeled it and mm -hmm. she said it was not technically a manufacturer home. Cause they, they did something with the foundation to make it stick. I don't know. Okay. So they, they've put a permanent foundation under yeah. it. probably. Yeah. It I don't know how she did that without, um, uh, if she doesn't own the land. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Typically, they, you know, if they're renting the land, they don't make it a permanent, it's not a permanent foundation. Um, I would ask all those questions, though, and probably the best way to go into a deal like that is to say, I don't understand. Uh, how does this work? Explain this and see what they say. And then get back to Blair and myself, and we'll see if we come up with something to help you. Okay. All right, that's Good. all I have. I had a... Uh, a friend of mine uh, who was a realtor in the Sacramento area, and she did one of these things, and she thought there was zero value to it, and it turned out it had two or three hundred thousand dollars of extra profit in there. Oh wow! Same Anybody type of situation. Like... Same type of thing, you know, where the the manufactured home on a rented lot, but still has a high value, and so you know there are a, fo a few folks across the country that specialize in flipping manufactured homes that are to be rehabbed or, or rental or uh, mobile homes that are to be rehabbed. There's some money in that deal. Oh, wow. Well, maybe I should just find like a, a real estate agent who can value the manufacturer home. I would. But I'd I see if you can get a hold of somebody because, you know, in depending on the area, that could be a, a decent commodity. I mean, you may have a house worth 300 and they only owe a hundred. You okay. just, just don't know until you get some expert opinion on that. And unfortunately there's not a good, as you correctly surmise, there's not a good way to do that. So you need to go in and uh, and get more information, but there could be a, a deal there. And a lot of your competitors will just ignore it because it's gonna require extra conversations, extra information, that type of thing. It might be okay. worth following up on. If nothing else, you'll learn a lot about that industry in that area. Okay. Open up another channel of business for you to focus on. Okay, that sounds okay. good, I'll do that. Okay, great. Anything else that we can help you with? That's it for right now. Thank you so much. I appreciate oh, it. You're most welcome. All right, Rob, are you there? I am. You hear me? I can hear you fine. Let me okay, good. clear the screen um, here. Excellent. What's, what's, uh, what's crack-a-lacking down in your neck of the woods today? 
Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you uh, an update on a couple things. I had uh, won a townhouse and uh, pr produced the you know sent the offer in, and the guy came back and he said, "Well, I need ten thousand more." And I said, "Well, that's not what you said." Long story short, I went through the numbers again. And I said, "Well, you know, it hurts me a little bit, but it's not terrible still if I give him uh, what he's looking for. I've got uh, five hundred a month cash flow." at about a $19,000 if my ARB is right. And my ARB could be a little bit low. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go talk, to, hopefully shake on this and, and get it signed tomorrow, but shake on it this weekend, go through the property and talk to him, get his um, complete cooperation on this. And I'm trying to get a longer term. He, did, he wanted to give me five months. I said, I gotta have at least a year and I'm really gonna push it to try to get two years. And right. explain to him, look, I'm not going to use the two years if I can help it, but I got to get, you know, flexibility. And I think I'll be okay. I, I, I'm still okay if I get one year, I think, on this property. It's okay. It's, it's just, it'll be stressful, but it, I think it'll be okay. You think it'll move quickly? Yeah, it's a nice townhouse. It's in, it's in Delray, which is a very hot area. There's a lot of <clears throat> good, you know, positive economics in Delray. And now I, yeah, I think it'll go, especially with a, you know, a, a starter finance. And then I've got a very good lender who can work with people to get them qualified. And, you know, I think putting that all in up front, not holding anything back, I can say, look, you're going to get into the property. You're going to own the property. We're, I'm going to work with you to get it refinanced. I'm actually going to turn them over to this, this guy to do that. And mm -hmm. I think, okay. Yeah. And it's a, it's a nice townhouse. I mean, it's, it, it's something that people would want. So, sure. So that one so, I think is good. So that's, you know, that, that, not bad, 500 a month and 19,000. And keep in mind when you sell that, especially if you're selling it out on a lease option, you can typically get more than ARV. You can get more than, you know, what we would consider to be a comp value because you are offering financing. Um, yeah. And it's typically not a problem on the refinance part because you, you have to make them understand. Uh, and I think we've got some language in there that uh, if not, we can give that to you, but, you know, you, what you're offering these folks is an opportunity home ownership where today they don't otherwise qualify for it. And you're offering an opportunity to do it at a lesser down payment that they may normally get today. And so let's say that the house is worth a hundred thousand, the market's a hundred and they can only get a loan for a hundred, but you can still charge them 110 and you just have to tell them that 10 is, is, you know, the, extra value that we're providing by providing you an opportunity to become a homeowner in advance of you literally qualifying to become a homeowner. Yeah, that, so, that could work. Hey, here. they've got to make up, you know, that type of like, thing. Yeah, that could work on this. This could go to 25 or 29,000 with that kind of strategy. So that's yeah. great. Excellent. Okay. Well, that sounds good. That sounds like a good one. Um, I, I hate to see these guys putting the boots to you and try and get more on the deal, but yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, you know, and I went back and I went, well, you know, actually, maybe I'm being a little greedy here to beat him up so much, but uh, I'll, I'll talk to him and I'll still try to beat him up for, you know, 500, 5,000 bucks or something. Try to get him. There you go. Yeah. And yeah, that's I'm right. Small. So if I stand next to a guy who's very short, sometimes it's okay. It does work. Yeah, I'm 6'2", so I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying you stand real close and you seem three times as tall. There you um, go. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I have it. I have another deal. I'm gonna pop up. I, this is on. I, I think this is a bit like uh, uh, Luann's deal. That uh, I think it's really close. Uh, that this is a another townhouse. This is in West Palm. Uh, she's got a 225 mortgage. She probably overpaid for this property when she got it just a couple of years ago. But she's just she's just fed up. Uh, she she she's just getting out of Florida. I mean, I don't know what happens, but. Um, but she's, you know, payments are eleven twenty six. Her interest is three point seven five. I mean, but she's probably got a thirty year mortgage, and she's hardly paid any of it down. It looks like she put in maybe as much as sixty thousand to get the place. It's just tight. I mean, I, I it, you know, the zestimate on this is about three thirty five. She's got to get three eleven to break even. So you know it and and taxes are 2400 insurance is a thousand and hoa is 255 a month so you know i don't know i don't know so 
on the surface, it looks like you've got 20 something thousand of potential equity. Yeah. Um, and she's, you know, you don't have to put any money up to do the deal. No. But what's the monthly again? What's the total monthly that, you know, you'd have to be paying? Total monthly, pre average it out two, 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 two three. Let's call it 1500 Okay. And what but do you think? Zillow claims that it's a $2,500 rent. So if that so would do, that would, that would buck it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that may be all right because if you could net a thousand bucks a month on a deal like that, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. And then just do the similar strategy that we just talked about for the other one. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, get them qualified and so forth. My, my uh, so gut is based on 2500 a month, it may have a higher value than 335 I mean, it could be, you know, it, and Zillow tends to be low. Uh, remember, if, if you have a choice between Zillow and Redfin or Movido or something like that, I would, use, I would not use Zillow. They tend to be low. Certain areas, they're okay, but they're never at the top of the market, and they're frequently at the lower half of the market in terms of potential comp pricing. Well, maybe that's maybe that's a good thing to be conservative on it. So absolutely, you know, the final bid, yeah. So, so maybe that, that's maybe not a bad thing. Yeah, if you can make so, it on a Zillow number, you're going to probably make some more money. Um, yeah, I'd be, yeah. I'd be careful before pricing it though, because you could be leaving a lot on the table. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll check that. And then lastly, for now, I got a couple potentially a couple of other things in the works too, but. This, this other one that was a little complicated, I, uh, I went by the property. I know, I wasn't supposed to, but I did. And uh, I had already talked to this guy. This is a property, it's, it's, let's think of it as five units. It's not really five units. It's a house and a, two efficiencies and a separate building. It's on kind of a compound. The whole, value, the whole asking price of that 950. And uh, I went by it and, and I looked at it again with new eyes. And I said, God, this is like the worst house on the block. And if I can't, and I went and I said, look, I need to try to do terms. Well, I want to do that. Okay. So I went through that and then I called him back. I said, how about an option to buy? What if I give you a price? And so I've been running through the numbers and, and I've talked to a couple of developer friends and I've said, look, I might have a property for you that you could, you could pop up in value 30, 40% with some work. Mm -hmm. And you've got a, a decent, I mean, based on a conservative ARV with 50,000 in, so it's a million in on the property ballpark, uh, a million to ARV with a new face to the house, fix up the pool, just kind of clean it up, some painting, you know, some landscaping, very big down here. It's about a seven and a half cap rate, which is reasonable. Right. It's not great. But it's it's not stupid. It's mm -hmm. not like saying, oh, it was a twenty cap rate. No, it's not. It's seven and a half cap rate, and 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 it's got you know with you know I think that they're not pulling in. I think that the potential um, revenue on it is eight to ten thousand for everything, and maybe more if they do a nice job. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at taking that option and saying, look, this is what I think. This is my dream. Let's take a look. You see if you have a dream when you see this thing, because it really is, it's an ugly house on a street of some really nice 1920s, 1930s stucco homes. And why this thing is there, I don't know, I don't care. But, but, I, but if somebody comes and fixes it up, they could really pop up the value and the street appeal and everything else. That sounds good. Those are the kinds of plays that you can make a lot more money on than you know a typical subject too so you may have a, a good one there if if you could get it up to ten thousand a month uh rent is that what you're saying keep it as a five unit yeah keep it you know at ten thousand a month now now it's a you know in 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 the range of of understandable you know so if it's if it's tw uh, producer in twenty thousand it's worth 1.2 or more now it's kind of you know it's tight it's not great but if it if somebody comes in and says, oh, you know, I know what to do, and you can pop it up two or three hundred thousand in value, now you're now you're talking. Right. And that's what I think this neighborhood is capable of. Right. Well, so and, as, as an option, you've got a lot of opportunities too. I mean, you can get an option on it. You could turn around and and, and pedal it to one of your redeveloper friends. Yeah. 
you know, and you know, you might be able to pick up a quick 50,000. Yeah. Um, that's the number I was thinking too. That's not a yeah. reason. Yeah. But it's, it's all packaged and you know, it's a handshake and so forth. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you know, for 10 bucks, you're making potentially 50, even if you knocked it, cut it in half and made a quick 25,000. Right. Uh, that, that's not chump change. You know, uh, yeah. you do, you do a couple of those a month and pretty soon you're talking real money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. That could yeah, be a so, good deal right there. Yeah. So that's what I think. I think that's what he really wants. He wants to cash out of the thing and, and so forth. And then, so, you know, I think that may work better for him. And, and, uh, right. you know, he just, anyway, I'm trying to make everybody happy and I've got to stop doing that. You know, that's stupid trying to make everybody happy. Right. You got to make Robert Bailey happy first, exactly. then everybody else. And, you know, yeah, that's the best, but, uh, you, you got some nice deals there. I mean, just, just what you went through here, you got over a hundred thousand dollars of profit, uh, sitting there between these three deals. Plus you got a couple of other ones. I yeah. know. I think so. And I, and I think that, that, uh, you know, I've done something that it, it may be a sin in the, in the deal bot world, but you know, I, 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 while I was reaching out to people, I bumped into a couple of wholesalers. These guys don't know what to do with their properties now. They're trying to sell them. And I said, look, what if we partnered? I said, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. So I said, if you, you know, if, if you get $5,000 for these properties, you'd be happy, right? Yeah. I said, geez, you know, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. So this is all good. So, um, you know, so I, I think I may do that a couple of times. There are a bunch of these guys that that's all they have. This is one of the first things that Boyer says in the introduction to the, to your whole program that, you know, if you got one arrow, you got one arrow. And if you got one arrow in this market, you're not, you're not okay. Yeah. And if you do, so it just makes sense. I think to do that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it, there's, there's no such thing, thing as a sin in transactional engineering. I mean, they're, any way you can skin a cat and there are a million ways to skin these cats uh, that if it comes out to a couple of bucks for you, it's a good deal. Especially yeah. if you have low risk, you know, right. the, the return on zero is pretty good. You know, whether yeah. it's 10,000, 30,000, 50,000, if you're spending nothing yeah. on a deal that somebody else brings you and you're paying them five when the deal closes, that's a pretty sweet deal. That's a great return. You can't do better. That's that that interest rate is called infinity. If it costs exactly, you exactly, and and you you are one of the more higher higher paid speakers in the country yeah. uh, to do that. And when I say speakers, you're just flapping your jaws talking to these guys, and you're getting paid a real high, you know, high six level six digit paycheck on that deal. Yeah. So yeah. good exactly. good for you. Yeah. So yeah. Any, any way you can do that, that's that's great. You yeah, so it. we'll just keep it going. Be, there, there's more coming. There's, you know, but we're not far enough along yet to talk about it. But it's coming. Sure. All right. Well, thank you for the update. That sounds good. Any other questions? Nice hat. Nice. Oh, you hat. like that, huh? Yeah. yeah. The rodeo. I, I yeah, I've rodeoed for years, but uh, um, you know, so it's just it's kind of a fixture. <laughs> Stays on my head most days. It's good. <laughs> Works good on you. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, appreciate the input. Let's see who else we've got here. Uh, anybody have their hand raised? And I think we've got uh, Ryan again. And I'm going to unmute you. Okay, Ryan. Hey, can you hear me? Oh, that sounds a lot better. Okay, good. All right. So, yeah, sorry. I was in the car. I just left a... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, no problem. A, close, uh, a deal. So, I... I I just started this whole pro this whole program last week, so I'm still very new. But um, mm -hmm. I had my first um, like house, house visit or whatever you want to call it. So um, I we agreed at 385. Um, so it's like kind of a tricky situation because I guess he just listed the property like three weeks ago at um, he listed at like 420 and okay. then wasn't moving, and then at 395 and then. I called him, it, so then, and now it's at 395, and it's been on the market for like 27 days. So um, I called him, and he's like, yeah, like the realtor's like a friend, so I could probably, like we could probably make a deal, I don't need the money right away, and like I'm just trying to get rid of it. Um, and so this is my first property, so I don't wanna just buy it, and then without having a buyer set up. Mm -hmm. But um, he was just asking me a bunch of questions, like he was, he was like, so, 
who are you paying? Like, are you paying the mortgage company or are you paying, are you paying me? Like, and what if you don't, what if the pay, what the payments stop coming? Like who's responsible for that? So, and because in the contract, it says that I'm paying the seller. So am I just paying the seller monthly and then he pays the mortgage? And then if I just stop paying him, then he's stuck with the mortgage? Well, uh, yeah, but the idea here is, I mean, are you, you're doing this on subject two where you'd have him deed it to you? Right, yeah. So, yeah, let me give you an <clears throat> So I okay. said 85, he owes, so there's two mortgages on it. There's like one for 170 and then one for whatever the rest is to 315. So is that like 40 grand or whatever? Sure. Um, so yeah, so he owes about 315 total on it. Um, okay. So then I put a, a carry back of 75 um, on the standard agreement, purchase agreement. Um, so he was just like, he was just asking, he's like, so you're gonna purchase, he's like, who does my deed go to? And I don't know, like he definitely knew <laughs> the right questions to ask. And I, I mean, I felt prepared going in, but then I just kind of was like, you know, like I'll take care of it. I'll make sure that, you know, you know, payments are being made and whatnot. But he's like, well, I don't know you from a rap class, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, sure. So I just, I guess maybe like a rebuttal for that. So anyway, I ended up leaving the purchase and sale agreement with him. He said he wanted his friend to look at who, who's in commercial real estate, who's been doing deals for like for a long time. So Sure. Um, in the uh, in the back office, in the uh, Google folders, you'll find some Q and A's that address a lot of those questions. Um, you know, and, and typically there's a lot of responses. It just, it really depends on, you know, the, the nature of the transaction. But you, what you try and do is you get some terms before you make that first payment so that to address your first concern, which is to have the buyer. I'd get started right away on trying to get yourself, a, a, you know, a, a lease option buyer for that property. Um, there, we didn't sign it. Okay. <clears throat> well, when you get it, uh, you know, if you can set it up, did you set it up to give yourself, you know, three months before you make that first payment? Well, yeah. He's like, well, if I close, I'm not paying anything. And I was like, okay, well, and I told, I mean, I told him what I was doing. And he was mm -hmm. like, if you get, if I wait, so you get a buyer, um, I just don't want to pay anything. And I'm like, okay, well, that's fair. If I can get a good buyer and I could, you know, get some money down, I mean, that's fine. I'll pay right sure. away. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. On, a, on a deal like that, 300 and, would you say 335? What was the? Uh, so he owes 315 and it's on the market for 395. I got it for 385 right on the golf course. Honestly, the pictures on MLS just suck. And yeah. like, the condition of the house is like pretty decent, but um, it's just like there's shit everywhere. And it's just, I mean, it's, I don't know. Right. So <laughs> you, you, you got to get in there and get that thing cleaned out and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But that's kind of elbow grease type deal you know you're not spending a ton of money to do that you got to get better pictures obviously before you do that but the fact that you know you've got it in a great location it's a nice house in a nice area um you know you you might be able to sell that thing for you know 4.19.9 or or something like that uh, 4.29.9 something in the, that kind of range yeah uh, you know you're going to be what, what, what would be your answer to the, who's who's responsible if, <clears throat> Um, no payments are made. I mean, I looked on the Google Drive and it's basically just saying, oh, like you should trust me kind of deal. And he was, I kind of, I followed the kind of that script and it really, so I don't know. There's, there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, number one is you can say, listen, if for whatever, we're going to, we're going to send you the payment and you're going to try to make the payment. So we're at risk too. We're going to send you, Mr. Jones, you know, the payment with the idea that you're going to make those payments. What happens if you don't make the payment? So we send to you. What happens if you pocket the money and don't make the underlying payment? How do we know that's going to happen? So you, you turn that around on them and you, you deal with that part of it first, you know, put them more back on the defensive, you know, how does, what happens there? Um, you can also say, listen, if I was to stop making payments, we'll go ahead and deed that back to you. Uh, you can have it back, you know, if that's the case. But the, the bottom line, Mr. Jones, is we don't make any money unless we make these payments and we won't stay in business long by stiffing somebody. Right. So, you know, we're out of business, uh, both from a moral, ethical and relationship standpoint, if we don't make payments and, and most importantly, we don't make any money until we get those things made. So, you know, there's not going to be, there shouldn't be a problem making those payments. Now that's why we try and get 90 days up front to make sure you find a buyer, 
um, you know, and you'll know very quickly because you're going to find a buyer and, and you have that thing priced at 400 and some thousand, you should be able to get 30 to 40 some thousand dollars down. Um, and that's going to give you, you know, plenty of cushion. I'd be more concerned though on a guy on a deal like this with the guy pocketing the money and not paying it. So what I would do is I would, like I said, flip it around. And then what you're going to want is some proof that if you're going to pay him, that he in turn pays them and you get a copy of that. Uh, one of the ways around that <clears throat> is you can make the check payable to the mortgage company, whatever the dollar amount is, and you send it to him so that he knows the payment's going to be made because he has to mail it in. Um, that's, that's one of the, that way, the ways around that is, yeah, Mr. Jones, we'll send you the payment. Uh, we'll send the payment to you to Bank of America made out and you just mail it off. That way, you know it's there. Um, and you can put something to the, to in the mortgage company. Yeah, make it to the mortgage company. No, but could we just mail it in and pay them? <clears throat> yeah, you could do that. But you know, if he wants to have some amount of control over, he wants to know the payments getting made. That's one way of doing it. Is say, listen, I'll send you the the check to Bank of America, and you mail it in. That way, you know it's been paid. If for whatever reason we don't make that payment, you can put this in the contract. So listen, we'll go ahead and deed that back to you. You know, we'll have, and you just drop the procedure and you put it in, the, in an addenda and say, listen, if we miss uh, two months payments in a row, we agree to deed you the property back. Okay. Then he's covered. Just don't miss your payments. But the best thing to do right now, go out there and find yourself a buyer. Get yourself a buyer's list going. Get yourself, you know, uh, get the word out there. Try and get some better photos you know, that type of thing and um, start putting it out there for market. You shouldn't have any problem finding, you know, buyer for that type of property for a, at least tenant buyer for that type of property. Yeah. I hope. Um, <clears throat> well, it's always, it always seems like that your first few deals, but you know, there, uh, there's always more buyers than there is sellers for these type of properties. Yeah. And then I have another lead um, that came in. There's a guy that lives on, um, Providence Country Club, which is a very prestige area, somehow got his lead. And um, he said he's the house is, I think it's like a million and a half dollar house. And he said that he's interested in, um, in the lease to purchase. He just wants, he has to confirm with his wife first or whatever. But, uh, <clears throat> but um, so there's obviously like, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, I guess, no, you guys kind of answered my question with the other property. I just get nervous when they, when they start asking you questions about like, oh, well, what if you default or whatever? I just, I'm trying to figure out like the best way to approach those type of questions because I obviously like I'm still learning and that would be a sweet payday. So, <laughs> right. Well, uh, you know, one thing to do is flip that background and say, well, what would make you comfortable? How would you like us to handle that? How, you know, how would, how would we, assage your concerns about you know making those payments um some of the some of the best ways is like what i suggested is you know if we don't uh, you know if we don't if we stop making payment we'll deed it back to you yeah obviously if we stop making payments it's because we're not going to be able to make any money out of the deal so why would we not want to give it back to you so the the rebuttal for the guy with the the million and a half dollar home you just basically said that he had a neighbor that um did the lease to own in the the, they like trash the property mm -hmm. and then they got stuck with doing all the all the work on it and everything uh, right well and that's the nice thing about you being in there because you're not going to be the one who lives in it you're going to find somebody living it so you're you're the one who's responsible for if it should be trashed now that's one of the risks about being in this business but obviously the the neighbor who did this didn't properly screen the tenant they had in there they didn't get somebody in there who was trash proof. Um, and so you wanted, you want to properly screen your tenant, um, you know, go through tenant check and, and things like that, just to make sure these folks don't have an eviction and, you know, they haven't torn up another house that's out there. So that's actually a benefit. Um, you know, that, that's a great question, Mr. Seller. I'm glad you asked that. And that's one of the nice things about doing business with us. We do this for a living. We're a professional company and we're the ones responsible if, you know, something gets torn up. So, yeah. So technically if I'm, if I'm leasing it, they would be responsible, right? 
But if I'm if I'm if it's a purchase agreement, then I would be responsible for any damages, right? Yeah, I mean, if 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 you buy it subject to, then you're the owner, and who cares? He doesn't he doesn't have a dog in that fight any longer. And if you tear up your own house, as long as you're making the payments uh, that are still in his name, he shouldn't care. If you are lease optioning it with the idea to lease option it again, in other words, a sandwich lease option, then yes, you're the guy who's responsible. Even if you get another tenant buyer in there, um, you, you know you're going to have to be responsible, and that's part of the one of the the basic premises of this business. And, and but it's also a sales point. It's something that you can tell these sellers: listen, we're going to be responsible. We're a company, and this is what we do. Okay. And we don't just put you know, any Tom, Dick, and Harry in there, we check our tenants out very carefully. We make sure that they have the capability of getting within a period of time, once their credit's repaired, they have the capability of getting a loan and cashing everybody out. We don't make it, once again, it's the same argument. We don't make any money um, unless and until we get this thing all the way across the finish line. So, you know, why would it be, it's not in our best interest to go in and try something and walk away. It's, I mean, that's, that's not what we do. Okay. Yeah, I just I gotta just keep plugging away. Um, I don't know. We'll see because he. I mean, even like I was at the meeting tonight. He's like, well, what? He's like, well, what are you offering? And I was like, well, I just want to make a deal that works for both of us. And he wouldn't tell me a number. Mm -hmm. I mean, he gave me anything. So I was like, I don't, like three eighty five. He's like, if that's what works for you. Then like write it up and and like I'll I'll get in contact with you after my right. buddy the paperwork. So I don't know. Um, now when uh, this is, we've had a, somebody had a deal. I don't know who was, um, that had the lawyer got his nose into a deal and got the thing messed up. One of the things to always ask these guys, if they want a buddy, a quote unquote buddy to look at it is, is this buddy going to check it for legal verbiage? I mean, is that what they're looking at to make sure that the, the paperwork itself's in order or are you, you know, handing it over to somebody else to try and negotiate a better deal? Because, you know, once we're done, we're done. And we're not going to, you know, negotiate something else. And you may end up losing us as a buyer. And you may not care, but, you know, this house has been on the market for four months. And, you know, we offer a, a ready solution for you immediately. So, you know, you can kind of blunt that up front. A lot of times what these guys will do is they'll, you know, hand it to their lawyer with the idea that, oh, yeah, the lawyer's going to check it to make sure that the the T's are crossed and the I's dotted from a legal standpoint, but uh, what they're actually doing and the lawyers want to earn their keep and they want to go in and, you know, I think you got to get more down. They got to do this and get that and all that kind of stuff. And they end up blowing up the deal. Yeah. So you have to warn them about that right up front. Say, you know, I don't have a problem. I mean, this is a confidential document between you and me. I don't have a problem if you share it with your buddy, but I want to make sure and we have to have, you know, at least a gentleman's agreement here that this, uh, the purpose of you having this guy look at it is to make sure that the legal T's are crossed and I's nodded. And there, if there's any questions, have them call me. Okay. But it's not a second bite at the apple for them to get a better deal. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I just got, I just got to keep, sorry about the dog. Um, I just got to keep uh, chugging along here and, I mean, it's only my first week, so. <laughs> You're doing great. You are absolutely doing great, Ryan, for the first week. This is awesome. I mean, you got two deal potential here you're looking at. And uh, I would always, um, to the extent you can, I would get the seller to talk first in terms of a price. Um, you know, it's the old old adage of he who talks first loses. So who, he who names a price first loses. So I'd always get, get there and – I think I think he's actually pretty desperate to get the house sold. I think mm -hmm. he's hard to, um, to be like, oh well, what do you offer? You know, I think he just he wants it sold, <laughs> and just wants sure. to make sure that the paperwork's legal. And I, I mean, I, I'm hoping that I'll get the deal, um, but we'll see. Well, you let us know, uh, and if you have any questions along the way, you know, to get a hold of Blair and myself, and we're more than willing to help you, whatever we can do there. Thanks, I appreciate it. You're on track. So any other questions, Ryan? Nope. I'm just ready to start making that money. <laughs> I think you're getting close. So you're, you're doing all the right moves, you know, you're doing the right stuff. So just uh, stay after it. And you know, it'll be one of these things that'll seem like overnight success after a period of time. 
but it's really all the hard work that you put into it and the, the learning you've dedicated to getting this thing done. So you're, you're yeah. on track. Thanks. Let's, let's see, we have Chris. Chris, I'm going to unmute you. Hopefully that unmuted you. Hi, there we Chris. go. Can you hear me? How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Good. Uh, nice you, you can turn on your video. Nice to meet All you right. too, if you'd like. All right. Oh, there we go. Awesome. So I'm sort of in the same boat as Ryan. This is my first week in the program, but I do have a closing call tomorrow. Okay. Um, I talked to the wife today. I, I spoke to Blair about it and he said that his feedback was sort of like you got uh, like sort of sounds like six different ways to exit it. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I got the ARV, but I just wanted to ask if you have any, I, I'm going through FMLS to look for uh, the rent prices the, and mm -hmm. it's not really shown too much in that area. Um, do you have any, do you have any other platforms? I looked at Zillow. They didn't have much either. Any other platforms? To uh, I like Rentometer. Rentometer? Is that what mm -hmm. you're saying? Yeah. R-E-N-T-O-M-E-T-E-R.com. -E -E uh, um, they do a pretty good job of giving you a, you know, pretty good range of uh, accurate pricing. Okay. Is this a rural property or is it? No, a, it's uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Atlanta, but it's, um, it's in Decatur. So it's in okay. a very actually, um, hot part of Decatur too. Yeah. So the high end, um, I should, I'll run down to sort of get your feedback too. Um, yeah. So their asking price is three seventy five. Um, she okay. so I, I followed the script to the T. Um, I loved it because <laughs> uh, I, I you know I've been doing this for a, a little while, and that was sort of our problem was you know um, getting some information from the sellers. But she she just she just came right out with everything, so it was great. So but she was open to. I asked about you know what's the lowest offer, and she sort of deferred that to her husband. So we have a call scheduled for the three of us tomorrow at nine. Mm -hmm. um, she said it's a seven bath, five and a half, but the tax records and Zillow and every other website says it's a four, three and it's 1422. So I'll have to clear that up tomorrow. Um, right. uh, you know, it, she just says it needs cosmetic work. Um, so in those, in that particular area, it seems like most houses either have like sort of a guest house or a detached garage. So they have a de detached garage. And she said, the roof does need repaired on that. But other than that, no, not too much. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for them selling is they're getting ready to move to Costa Rica. Uh, they have two mortgages and she says it's very close to around 300 um, on the mortgages. Um, uh, the monthly payment, including PITI, is 2800 uh, She said everything is current on that. Uh, she did say that she would be potentially open to terms. And uh, that was about it so far. Now I have the ARV, um, I have a calculator. So it, going through it, it comes out to 501. I think that's a little high. I, you know, most of the time, like you were talking about earlier, uh, Zillow's sort of off, but I actually think in this case, Zillow's sort of in the realm and that's at 430. Um, so okay. I, I, do, I think it's more in that range. The 501 I think is more um, after rehab um, potentially. And I think it could sure. even go higher than that. But uh, I don't know. Do you have any, uh, what's your initial thoughts on that? Well, it sounds like you have a potential pretty good deal there. Um, okay. You know, you, you're, on, you're on track. I would definitely find out, um, you know, what you think you could rent it for. And uh, they just want out from under it. Yeah, well, they're moving. So they're moving. Yeah. So they, they've rented it out for the last 10 years. Um, she said that this was sort of a uh, her husband's retirement. Uh, they bought it in 90. It's the, the record shows they bought it in 96 for like 75,000. So he's, I oh, guess wow. he can make a decent chunk of change off this. Um, I, I would find out Chris, what you got going on there with the difference between the seven, five and the four, three. Yeah. <laughs> is there, uh, is there something that's different? I mean, have they added something illegally? Okay. Uh, you know, are they counting this extra unit and they've added stuff there? You know, I just, I don't know. You okay. probably need to, you know, check into that and find out what's going on because that could potentially, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily um, mess up the deal, but you need to be aware of it because if there is an illegal structure they've added on illegally, uh, that not only strengthens your hand, but it, and it weakens theirs, but it is a potential disparity um, that could work to your advantage when you go to sell it. So, you know, okay. you, you could have a potential gold mine there. 
All right. Um, now, I, there was one comp as far as the, the rental on FMLS. It's, it's on the same street or right the next street over. And it, it was 3300 so that's not a huge, but I mean, I guess it's still a positive cash flow there. From 500 bucks is 500 yeah. bucks. You know, there's yep. nothing wrong with that. So okay. that, that sounds good. You may have, it sounds like you got a potential smoking hot deal here, you know? All right. Very uh, good one. So, so Blair's yeah. advice was either, you know, if they agree to terms, fantastic, but regardless, just get it at, at, under contract as a cash and then we'll figure it out. Later. So that's yeah. What yeah. For. I mean, you, you definitely have a potential wholesale deal, especially if it needs some work. Um, and you know, if nothing else, you can get it under contract and you can find a, a handyman special, uh, lease option tenant. So Blair is absolutely correct. There's, you know, he's saying six ways to skin his cat. I can think of a dozen <laughs> okay. deal like that. You've got a real potential and I'm familiar with the Atlanta market. Decatur is a smoking hot piece of it right now. So mm -hmm. you, uh, you're, you're cooking with gas on all burners right now. You right. say after that and. Keep us in the loop and let us know, you know, what else uh, comes up and what else we can do. Absolutely. This. And then one more, one last question. And it's sort sure. of a, a workflow question. Mm -hmm. So right now I've had this evening two sellers that, you know, my, my VA was calling them and then they didn't answer and she dropped the message, the voicemail. And then they called back and I received the voicemail in my email. So is that just sort of a manual thing that I'm going to have to go and send it back to her to call them again, or should I handle those? Or is there a way to automate that? Um, you know what, that, to be honest, that is a technical question beyond my knowledge okay. level. That's all a right. clear question. <laughs> all right, I'll ask one. <laughs> I got too many years on him to understand all that stuff. I, I know how to put the deals together, but he's the guy who understands that. But, uh, you know, if, if you've got a motivated seller and they're calling and leaving a message, um, you know, and it's not just a, you know, tire kicking type thing, you know, probably didn't hurt to get on the phone and even you know, pull out the VA script and try that yourself. Absolutely. Right. In the meantime, until you get better advice than I can give you, <laughs> I would, I'd send it off back off to your VA and let them follow back up with it. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah, you got it. Anything else, Chris, we can help you with? No, thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen, ladies, gentlemen, uh, if there's nothing else, we will sign off at this point in time. We appreciate everybody's input this evening. And uh, it's been a good call here, almost uh, an, an hour or so in length. And we're always available to help. Hit us up on Boxer, email. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got some golden nuggets out of that. As I said before, if you want to learn more about how you can get into this side of the business where we literally get paid like on a flip, every time we acquire a cash flowing rental property. It's like the best of both worlds, like a hybrid between flippers and buy and hold guys. We're here doing deals where we're getting the benefits of both. So if you want to learn more about that, check out our free webinar at BlairHalver.com, B-L-A-I-R-H-A-L-V like Victor, E-R.com. You can check us out there. The webinar is called How to Consistently Do Five or More Deals a Month Without Wholesaling, Without Rehabbing, Without Chasing Deals, and Without... Uh, working 80 hours a week. That's a long title. I had to remember that. Uh, also, my attorney wants me to tell you, I am an idiot. Do not listen to anything I say. You will not make any money doing anything I say. So don't listen to me. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going to do with this information. All I'm trying to do is show you what I'm doing in my own business. Take it or leave it. Uh, and, you know, I am not an attorney. I am not an accountant. So anything that you might have heard on this, don't take that out as legal or accounting advice. Go consult your own professionals. I delegate all that stuff anyway. You definitely do not want to listen to me on that. All right. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you on the next one. Uh, go ahead and click the like button. Subscribe. You know, whatever you do on whatever platform you're, you're listening to this on. And uh, we'd appreciate it. And if you've got some value out of it, please share it with a friend. Sharing is caring. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one.